Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to share with you our streaming API response feature. This is another huge piece of our real-time feature set, and it allows you to deliver an API response in pieces as opposed to delivering the whole thing at once. Now, why would you wanna do that? Think of a chatbots, whether you use ChatGPT or Claude or whatever your favorite flavor of AI is these days. When the response is delivered, you ask it a question and it starts to answer it. That response is delivered in pieces and you can kind of see it. It's almost like the bot is typing the response out to you. That is the perfect demonstration of a streaming API response. It can take a large chunk of content and deliver it piece by piece, which can be a really great enhancement to the user experience of your application, just kind of depending on what you're doing. I'm going to show you what the implementation looks like in Xano. It's super simple. And then I will walk you through a couple of examples. So here we are in Xano. I have a very simple API endpoint. Just a couple of steps here to demonstrate the streaming response. So when we're setting up an API that delivers a streaming response in Xano, we want to make sure to head to the API settings and change the response type from standard to stream. And once we've done that, we can start building our functionality. Now, the first thing you'll notice is here in the no code API builder, our response block has disappeared. Why is that? Well, that is because responses from a streaming API are actually handled by this new function called streaming API response. We provide this function, the data to return. This is essentially one of the chunks of data that we want to send. And the API will keep an open connection with your front end as it continues to deliver these pieces. Now for this example, I'm just using a simple text array with a poem inside of it. And this array has each line of the poem split up into new items. We're using a for each loop against that text array. And so for each of those lines in the poem, we are using the streaming API response function to deliver those line by line. And then I have a little sleep function in here just to give it a tiny bit of delay. I'm actually gonna reduce this just a little bit before we get started. And this is really just because the streams from Xano are actually returned pretty fast and almost too fast to most effectively demo what this actually looks like. So let's go ahead and publish that small change here. And I'm going to hop over to Postman and actually call this API so you can see it in action. So here we are in Postman so we can test our streaming API. Now you want to make sure that your request is set to HTTP. If you're using something like Insomnia instead, you would open an event stream request. Otherwise the procedure is exactly the same. We have our API URL here and we can click send. And if you watch the bottom, you'll see the lines of that poem delivered one by one. And so as you can see, Xano is delivering the lines of this poem one at a time. Using that streaming response, we connect to the API, we wait to see every single message come through, and then once it's done, the connection is closed. And that streaming functionality all happens because of this streaming API response function. Super simple, nice and easy to use. Now, you may be wondering what happens if you call this API from a platform that doesn't support streaming responses? Well, I can show you that too. So we're going to get this endpoint URL again. And this time I'm just going to paste it into my browser and we'll see what happens. So to demonstrate what happens when we call an API that delivers a streaming response from a platform that may not actually support it, we're using Insomnia for this example. Insomnia, of course, does support streaming responses, but I just want to use it to show you what this looks like. So if we send just a normal get request to this endpoint, you can see our timer for how long this response is taking to come in. Uh, it keeps climbing and climbing, and that's because what it's going to do is just deliver the entire response at once. So I wouldn't necessarily say there's full cross compatibility or anything like that, but it is good to note that there is kind of a fallback here if whatever you're calling this API from does not support a streaming response. Now, I want to walk you through a little bit more of a practical example. This was great just to kind of demo the functionality, but I want to show you how you might use this in practice. So this API is designed to simulate bulk sending of emails. Let's say you have an application and part of your application allows users to 
upload CSVs, maybe they're coming from another platform over to yours and they need to import some customer data, for example. Well, you're probably going to want to be able to track the progress of that and not have to wait for the entire CSV to be processed before they know whether or not it worked, if they have anything to address, things like that. Streaming responses can be really great for that. So this API is my simulation of an email sending endpoint. Maybe you're using like SendGrid or something like that. This is just easy to simulate whether a message is sent successfully or it returns an error. So this is not our streaming API. Our streaming API will actually call this to try to send each message. So let's take a look at our streaming API. The way that this works is we take in that CSV as well as the message contents for the email that we want to send. We're going to use CSV stream to actually loop against those emails. But before we do that, we want to get a total count. And the reason I want to do that is because I also want to populate a progress bar that shows accurate progress of how much longer this is going to take. So we have a couple of steps just to decode the CSV and count the number of rows. So the number of emails that we are providing here. And then we have one more variable that keeps track of the position. So which email are we sending? And then finally, we use a for each loop to loop against that CSV stream. So this loop gets those CSV entries one at a time. And for each of those, we just add one to our position just to make sure that we are counting that accurately. And then we make an external API request to that API that I just showed you previously. And this is the one that simulates the actual sending of an email. If you were actually doing this, this step would probably be calling your external mailing service. And then finally, we have our streaming API response. And this actually delivers a JSON object with a few pieces of data inside of it. So we have our recipient, we have the result, so whether it was sent successfully or not. And then we have our position of where we are in that total CSV and a total count of the items in that CSV. And our front end is going to take all of that and process it and display the streaming response as we iterate through these emails. Let's take a look at that. So this is my incredibly simple front end. I'm just going to type in a test email message here, and I'm going to provide it a CSV. So we have our CSV uploaded, and all we have to do is click Start. And when I click Start, you're going to see a couple of things happen. You're going to see the front end populate with information, and I'm also going to use this Network tab to show you the raw contents of what the streaming API delivers. So let's go ahead and click Start. And we can see that progress bar is updating. We can see each item populated in our front end. And we can also see here the actual raw contents of what that streaming API delivers. So what we get from the streaming API is an ID, which is a timestamp. So that is when the message was sent. And then we have the actual data that is being sent, whatever that may be. You could pretty much send whatever you want here. My front end is designed to take this input and parse it into a way that makes sense so we can actually display this information on the page. Let's go ahead and run it one more time just for fun. So there we go. There's our items being populated and our progress bar is updating. And this is all coming from the streaming API response function inside of Xano. Now you're definitely going to see us demo this functionality as well as the rest of our real time features a lot in the near future. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of that. If you have any questions or comments, or if you just want to tell us how you plan on using this new feature, let us know down in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on the Xano community at community.xano.com or talk to us in support chat inside of Xano. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.